how God wants us to live. How God has picked us to live. In other words, we live in the world, in the society where there is wickedness, evilness, and all kinds of sin, etc. If I am trying to tell so many things, I can tell till evening. But what God expects from us as children of God, how are we going to live? Are we going to live the way God wants us to live or the way the Satan wants us to live? Or else any human beings wants us to live? If we are going to live the way God wants us to live, my beloved, we have to follow the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ and also we have to obey the word of God which never changed even the heaven and earth may pass away but the word of God will not pass away. Turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 18 verses 19 eight, chapter 18 verses 18 and 19. Genesis chapter 18 verses 18 and 19. Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. What God has spoken to him is God wants us to be a men and women of covenant keeping people of God. Abraham chose God chose Abraham because he kept the covenant. God knows that he will keep the covenant. And he wants us to keep the covenant. People of God who keep the covenant. And uh, covenant, those who live and live in God and keep the covenant will be faithful to God. They will be a men and women of having integrity in their personal life and they will be living a righteous life with the righteousness of God. They will not do evil things and the wicked things. They will keep the commandments of God. They will obey the word of God. They will never rebel against God and his word. My beloved, there are people in the church today, they are blind to see the blessing because they are breaking the covenant. There are three kinds of covenant. I want to speak about the covenant, blood covenant. In the future, I will try my best to find out about the other covenant and teach you. And uh, covenant is the foundation of the Christianity. And covenant is the foundation of the marriage. Covenant of the foundation of the vision that God has given to us as a church. Out of all this covenant, even the New Testament and the Old Testament are bound together with the code of covenant. Today, I would like to show you from the word of God, as the book of Hebrews says, without the shedding of the blood, there is no ransom for the sin. And that was the covenant that God has given to the church. When God gave the covenant to Abraham, he kept the covenant and he was faithful servant of God. He, God began to bless the all earth through him and his nations were blessed. If you are a man and woman who keep, keep the covenant of God, God will bless you and your family, my beloved. And uh, the blood covenant is the most powerful covenant and that is why Jesus Christ became the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world and shed his precious blood. 
before keep the covenant my beloved you have to die for yourself jesus did it when he was in the garden of gethsemane book of luke chapter 2 verse 42 jesus said father if it be possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not my will let thy will be done and he has to die for his will first to do the father's will if we if you and i have to keep the covenant if you and i are willing to keep the covenant you and i have to die for ourselves jesus that is why jesus said if anyone wants to follow me deny yourself and take up your cross daily and follow me denying yourself is dying for yourself and forget you about yourself and humble yourself to do god's will when you do god's will you have to carry the cross and when it come to marriage life people make a covenant before god in the day of their marriage and also as they before god they make the covenant and the day of their marriage first day everyone is supposed to have a virginity before they marry in the day of their marriage as they are coming together physically as hymen is broken and there will be a shedding of the blood first day of the marriage and the day of the marriage my people my beloved brothers and sisters two will die and one will birth in the day of marriage what is the meaning of it the two people who are going to get married the last moment before they come to the altar of god to make the covenant before god they have to die for their self that is the last moment that they will live as a one person and soon after they make the covenant two will die and one will give birth to one person both of them become a one person through the shedding of the blood on the bed at the first, first day at that way you keep the covenant when that covenant is broken in the old testament old testament law was to stone to death if anybody go and have a physical relationship and live in adultery outside the marriage they are supposed to stone and kill them they was they must stone to death that was the old testament law and when it come to new testament if you keep the covenant through the shedding of the blood before the uh, before god and after that you if you break the covenant and go and sleep with another man or a woman and live in adultery what jesus said in the book of romans chapter 1 verses from 29 to 32 he explained and said i will cut you off totally i have nothing to do with you i will not listen to your prayers i will not have any fellowship with you i will not bless you i will turn my face against you and that is the new testament law that god has given to the church today beloved how many of you have fallen to this sin you may be wondering why god is not answering your prayers why god is not doing that miracle as you are giving tithes and offering at into to the church services doing ministries and bearing various kinds of responsibilities in the church but god is not listening to your prayers because he has promised and written in the word of god in the book of romans chapter 1 verses from 29 to 32 i want to read to you those who are not blessed as a family those who are suffering you may be blaming god maybe thinking that you are too righteous that's the reason why that god is not also answering you but turn to the word of god and see what it says the romans chapter 
verses from 29 to 32. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil, mind, evil mindness, they are whispers, backsiders, heads of God, violent, proud, boasters, Invest, inventors, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, understanding, undiscreening, undis undersworthy, untrustworthy, unlovely, unforgiving, unmerited, full of knowing the righteousness judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death not only to do the same but also proof of those who practice them this is what will happen to the people who break the covenant today so many workers and the pastors and the ministers in the church have broken the covenant of God and that is the reason why they, are, they were not blessed. They make a covenant when they come to the ministry through the precious blood of Jesus. They get the washing of the blood and become a children of God and say, Lord, I am the potter, you are, you are the potter, I am the clay, do what you want, I dedicate myself and then they do what they want and they're breaking the covenant and they will not be blessed. And I urge you this morning, if you are in that position, my beloved, repent with fasting and ask God to give you the grace to come back to his presence through the true repentance with fasting and prayer. May God give you the grace this morning to come to his presence and to please him as the Isaiah 1, 19 says, come let us come and reason together. God wants you to come and reconcile with you this morning with all your wrongdoing and sin that has done before the eyes of God. May God give you the grace to repent and come to his presence.